Um, we, we came, my mom and I came home. There were rumors about this rocket at the bathhouse among women, and my mother didn't believe it because there were rumors going on all the time. When you live in a war zone, you live life still. Things, there are rockets and sounds of bullets going off, but you still live life. Um, and so you go to the bathhouse, you, uh, you, you cook, you clean, you eat, you do what you have to do to survive. That day, uh, I came home and I was ironing this dress and <coughs> I heard the boom and it was much bigger than it had been, much louder than the other sounds that were coming from the rural areas. We lived in the city. And both my mother and I knew that that rumor had come true, that school was bombed. Um, we both took off. It was a block, it was about a football yard from our house. And uh, as, we, as I reached the, the gates of the school, I, I saw things that a child at that age should never see. Um, I saw my classmates injured. There's blood all over the place. And there was one boy in our school, one young boy. And the teacher, he, she, he was the son of one of the teachers who decided she wanted her only child close to her. Uh, even though it was an all-girls school, he was basically forced to go to the school. And I, um, I had never seen uh, death before. And I watched one of the teachers carrying him out, and he had been beheaded mm -hmm. by this experience. So this, this image stayed with me. Uh, this was the image of war this nastiness, this extremism of human condition. And I wanted to understand it, and that's why I became a war correspondent. And I can keep going back to that scene every time I, and I reported from Iraq, from Iran, from Pakistan, and gone to the front line in Afghanistan. So to try to understand, why do we do this to 